Alright, ready for a disclaimer? Here it is. I know that if I change the gears in this axle, I gotta change the gears in that axle. I'm not an idiot. I'm gonna do both. Just not in the same video, most likely, because I think each one's gonna be pretty long. But in the end, we're gonna have four 11s here and four 11s there. Alright, watch me. It's a nine and a quarter Chrysler and a Dana 44. Yeehaw. Alright, now most of the following things are going to be about the same for both sides. Uh, the only difference between this side and that side is one axle stub shaft is short, not stub shaft, one of the axle shafts is shorter. Uh, this would be the long side. This is the side I typically break because it's the one you can't find. <laughs> they quit putting these on in 86. So if you either have a newer Dodge Ram Charger all the way up to like a 93 Dodge Ram pickup. Um, you won't have this hub, you'll have a center axle disconnect. Uh, this does not have that. So there'll be a few more steps, but once we get to the carrier portion, everything's going to be about exactly the same. So I'm going to go ahead and disassemble this hub. Uh, we're going to pull the steering cross shaft off, the steering arm, whatever you want to call it, that goes in front here. And the main reason for that is because I don't think the carrier is going to come out with this in the way. So you're going to have to knock at least one side off. If you're going to knock one side off, you might as well knock both sides off. Same tools, just a little bit more time. You know what I mean? So, excuse me while I go get some Allen wrenches. I'm going to start disassembling this guy. All the parts are going to go into this box. And that way I can keep everything together and I don't just lose stuff. I hate just setting stuff on the floor if I can. If I do happen to be under the vehicle, I try to send them inside the jack stand. Uh, believe it or not, because that's the area where I think it's least likely to be kicked around. Alright, let's get to it. I'm going to take off that clip. Of course it flew. Aha! Ta-da! Spring clip. Now this whole sucker should come. Actually, you know what usually works pretty good? Take a couple of these Allens. Now very carefully because these are soft. Ta-da! 
And there's your axle nut. So now we gotta get that off. That's what that socket looks like. It fits right down there. Only gun it on the way out. Do not gun this on. I just gun it off for the means of expedience. That guy. And then there should be a locking washer. It looks like this sucker could use some grease anyway. If I must be honest with myself. And I must. Double spiked. Ta -da. And then there's another axle nut. Again, don't use this on the way on. That one's off. Alright, now I probably should have done this at the beginning, but we're going to take our brake caliper and bracket off at this time. So, what we're going to do, I think you can see that, we're going to take this brake line off anyway to get at that caliper bolt. Okay, and then there's or the bracket bolt, and then there's one down right there. Let's see if I can get some light on it. Yeah, there's the other one. So this one's pretty easy. That top one, not so easy. But if you look at my brake line. be a bad time to do that anyway. Alright, we're doing it. Let's get her done. Spraying down my, uh, sorry, you guys can't see it. Five eighth bolt. I sprayed down my, um, brake lines so that whenever. Try to disconnect them. Hopefully, uh, the blaster gets in there a little bit and comes apart a little easier. If I got to replace the whole front brake line system, it's not that big of a deal because honestly, and for truly, oops, there went that copper washer. I'm making a mess on the floor. But I've never been accused of being the smartest or the brightest. And I think those are three corner bolts, which Oh no, they're 
bigger than that. Don't lose your bolts. I'm just gonna temporarily reattach. My brake line, so I figure out what I do with my wrench. Ooh, wrench. This is not the same wrench, but it was handy. All right. Now back up front. bearings don't look horrible. Now if I remember, these should be a 9 16 One. And they're very rusty. There's a washer under each one of these. All right. I'm just gonna set those aside for a minute. Now we should. I'm debating whether or not to grab a rag. I'm Not bad there. Now, as is my habit, I'm going to put all the washers and nuts back on. I'll let you know this bites me in the ass in a minute. I might have done this premature. Actually, you know what? Let's just see if I did it prematurely. But you should be able to grab your axle shaft now. Alright, I was right. This does slide out, but there's a 
grease zerk plug right here on that cap. I don't know if you can see it. Spins out with a screwdriver. I forgot about that last time because I had the same issue because you have to take the axle out to get the spindle off because you can't get at the spindle nut with the axle shaft in so it has to come out but that's what I'm hanging up on. Let me knock that out and uh, a couple of seconds with a screwdriver we should be good to go. It's funny how something like this could just ruin your whole project for the little bit. It causes a lot of aggravation but now There you have it. We're out. I'm going to put that little screw fitting right back in so I don't pollute the inside of this bearing. This U joint. Whatever. That thing. Alright. The other side's going to be just the. Oh, the exact same as this, except I'm going to take this sucker off, too. I almost forgot about that. It looks like it's about a three-quarter. Oops. See if it comes off. Oop. And nope, it does not. This sucker ain't straight to begin with. Smoke wrench. That's all I can do. <coughs> well, I didn't film it, but you should always make sure your drip pans far away when you light up your torch. But luckily, I knew where my smoke or my fire extinguisher was, and I put it to good use. Now I'm open the garage door. So, welcome back to the front axle Dana 44. Um, I had to take a break from this for a little bit uh, because, well, first off, Spring Carlisle came up. Second off is, is I found out I needed ball joints. So I did ball joints, but we're going to pop this sucker out. Like I said, there's no... Uh, while there is a center pin, because you can slide the axle shafts in and out because they free float, you don't really need to do anything with it. But three-quarter bolts, and it should just pop right out. Oh, wait. I almost forgot my most important thing to do. The most important thing. Hold on. Before you ever take one of these apart, you gotta punch mark it. And like I mark it. And even though there's like an E and what's supposed to be like an upside down E, I think it should be right about here, or an F, I just, I'd rather be sure. So we're going to put one punch mark. I usually, like I said, I put them right below the bolt head. One there. And then we'll put one right there. Oh, let's get that a little more defined. There's one. Now we're going to put two. Oops. Swing and a miss. Two. And the reason, like I said, I put them up there near that cap bolt is it not only tells me which side, but also which orientation. Because you can flip this upside down and be really, really in a bad mood. Have a bad time. But anyways, back to it. Take this out. Oh, didn't get that one the whole way out. Throw that on the floor for now. All 
right. Now let's take this puppy out. So I stopped, I paused, and from what I understand is it's just in there snug. Oop, there it went. Okay. Break cleaner this sucker out and uh, we'll get on to moving the pinion which doesn't really look bad just doesn't really look good either I mean 221 gears <laughs> what do you want and we're gonna replace I'm gonna assemble it check it and then we're gonna replace these axle shaft seals because they're no good no bueno and I didn't buy the $60 tool I bought, uh, I didn't buy any tool actually, so I'll show you how I plan on attacking that whenever I figure out how I'm attacking it. Okay, back to it. Alright, engine and eight. Got a battery. Shook the battery loose. All right. A little light persuasion. When that sucker comes out, then you can take your nut. Hopefully. Something goobered on my threads. I'm not reusing this one anyway. If you're reusing it, you're going to want to get that on better. And for the record, I do not recommend reusing your pinion nut ever. here and pop me out some bearings and some races.
bearing. And the race is well on its way, actually. We get a little bit of a longer punch. Unlike the GM and uh, the other rears. This one, you can pound the race the whole way around, it seems. Without really worrying about uh, where you're hitting. Missed that one. That sucked. Oh, I'm getting kind of in the way. Let me see here. There, if you can see. There we go. See that shiny part? That's that whole inner race on the other side. So you can fairly easily get on it the whole way around. Now you have to excuse me if I block the camera some, but this is going to take a minute. Or not. Uh-oh. wonder where that came from. Heh. So, uh, these are the new gears, the new 411s, got my flat wheel, I'll go ahead and flat wheel this out and make me a setup bearing, be back in a minute. Alrighty, 
That's a little looser than I would have liked, but it'll be all right. Uh, the big thing is, is just remember that you don't want to take anything off the faces because it's this distance that matters. And I always say the best place to start with these type of uh, installation measurements is with the number of shims that were under it to begin with. And believe it or not, that is a grand total of zero. So no shims. I'm also going to do something a little unorthodox where normally I hadn't made up my mind that I was going to... Wait, let me get it. That I was going to... Usually what I do so I don't damage the new bearings is I leave the old bearings on the carrier whenever I redo the gear so that way I take take it in and out and then I press the new but those bearings have a quite a bit of rust in them uh, or on them and so do the seals so I think I'm gonna move on to, to go ahead we're gonna put the I'm gonna press off those old bearings and then put the new gear back on and then I'm gonna go ahead and do the axle seals and just get them out of the way still haven't quite figured out exactly how I'm gonna do that but I have an idea okay so here's what I came up with. This pipe, a uh, piece of tubing, is left over from whenever I did um, the trailer ramps. This is the same diameter that goes through the, you know, where they tilt up the bar, whatever, the uh, hinges. And it just fits so, oh so perfectly into the new seals. You know, nice and snug, nice and fit. But the problem is, is while well, I could just weld something on the end of this and then pound the seal through, when it comes to install the new seal, I need to basically be able to install this in the carrier and then from one end of the axle to the other pound straight across. You get what I mean? It might make a little more sense whenever I show you how I'm actually doing it. Pardon my air compressor. But what I came up with was to connect, and it's the wrong use for all the right tools, is to connect most of my half inch extensions together and that gives me enough length to get from the the long side which on a Dodge would be the driver side from one end of the axle to the other and to uh, you know get it poked in where I could probably stick a socket onto it and then pound the other side Actually, before I ruin a socket, maybe I ought to look into that. Because this might be simpler than I think it is. That's an idea. Hold on that thought. One moment. Alright, so back to plan A. Supposedly, if you have a 32 millimeter socket, it'll fit real well, too. Um, the only problem is, is, I don't have a 32 millimeter socket. That's as big as they come. If you did, if I wanted to go out and buy a socket to fit that, it would probably work, but... I have a couple of these and well I just want to get done. So here we go with some weldering. Woohoo! Kind of a pathetic tack, but we'll, we'll run with it.
Honestly, the chrome's probably bad for me. I know, you're going to beat me up in the comments, but... I'll turn the heat up a little bit. Well, it's actually as high as it goes. Well, on 110 anyway. All right, so for those two maneuvers, I'm getting these out. Ooh, yuck. I left it at the full length. I didn't trim it down yet. But I think I'm going to have to cut it down right about there, roughly. So that way my... Um, other pieces can slide through. For, one of the first things I do though is I'm gonna clean these out. I'm not gonna film that too much, but there's an awful lot of crud in here. All right, CV boots need change. All right, there's my grandiose extensions, and that's my cheapest one. And what I'm gonna do. This is again the Dodge, it's going to be the long side on the driver's side. I scraped out as much of that gunk and crap as I could. But what I should be able to do... Oh, let me get a seal. Sorry for spinning you guys around so much. Take one of my seals. I'm going to set you guys down. About there. I'm gonna take clean this off. I'm still getting dirt out of that thing. Anyways, then what we're gonna do? We're gonna take this, like such. Back it up just a little bit. Stick it on there. Need some. Sorry to steal your light, but and then hold some tension on it. Yep, that appears to have worked like a charm. Woohoo! Looks good. Yeah, maybe a little more on the top. Might give her a couple more wax. But, uh, yeah, I'm not mad. Okay, to the other side. Alright. Second verse. Same as the first. Ooh. Thank you. 
haven't driven any Metster. Yeah, we like that. We'll go with that. Alright, on to other more exciting things. Alright, those are not three quarter. Mm, they might be 11 sixteenths. They're 11 sixteenths. And they should be right handed thread, or left handed threads. So, righty Lucy. Ha ha ha! They are normal threads. gear do not use this bam goodbye highway gear all right let's see I've already cleaned this off and I went over my gear with a file These are the new bolts for the kit, and I'm doing these two to align it. Very light taps. Tap, tap, tap. We're not trying to kill it here. Huh. We might have to warm it up. Let's go see what we can do. Boy, when this camera goes into sleep mode, it really goes to sleep. The book calls for 70. All right, sometimes you just got to admit that you didn't know what you were doing, sit back, educate yourself, and move forward. I've done a couple rear ends. This is my first ever front axle build. This is my first ever Dana build. I didn't figure it would be that much different, but it turns out it's a little more different than I thought. So let's go with the differences. First off, on these pinion gears, there is no, on my setup anyway, there's no crush collar. It runs off of solid shims. Solid shims, these here are the ones that go, excuse me, 
These are the ones that go on the pinion uh, end where the yoke is. They go and sit down. Well, actually, this bearing goes down onto there, and then these sit on top, like such. Okay. And this one goes. Excuse me, this is a, my setup bearing. Inside the housing, in front of this race, right here. Now, I saved them all. I did save them all. And I have measured over and over again, two or three times actually. these two from you know this point on up they are as identical as I can tell I'm a machinist I mean I get maybe a thousand to half thousand difference here and there but I mean if those of you that work in the machining world should know so I think everything should line up the same because the housing is the same so therefore if these are all the same it should line up the same way so I'm gonna go ahead this bearing here or this shim goes against the axle housing underneath this race okay and I'm gonna go ahead and pound that in with the new bearing the reason I'm gonna go ahead and pound that in is because quite honestly if I gotta pound it back out it sucks but it's not like I'm not afraid of damaging anything when I press my bearings that's when I tend to damage stuff and that's why I made the setup bearings then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take this bearing, this is the old one, it does not fit, slide down on comfortably, and I'm going to make it into a setup bearing. Now I do have two brand new bearings, so yay for me, for the pinion. Now this is where it gets a little goofier, is with this guy. This is the carrier and I'm sorry as you can see right here I damaged the race taking it off but then I realized there are shims underneath the bearings and apparently this is a Dana thing you press the, put the shims on press the bearing on check it for fit whatever have you now I didn't take the other side off yet because once I figured this out I was the flabbergasted and I'm going to have to do a little bit more work and I have to spend just a little bit more money so I went to well first off the reason I bought four bearings is there must be a Dana 44 like front and rear kit or something goofy like that because that's the carrier bearing that came in and it is way oversized it is huge So we can't use it. But I did manage to go to my local Napa, take this bearing with me. They pulled the numbers off and they got these bearings, which are the same size. And I got four of them, four total. Because I'm gonna make two of these into a setup bearing. I'm going to measure and write down all the shim thicknesses on either side. We're gonna start off, I always say it's best to start off right where you were with the um, shims as they are on this carrier and then we'll take a pattern and then if that works or if I gotta adjust shims I just got I don't have to press them on and off I just slide them off move some shims around press them but we're gonna keep the same total number of shims because the carrier hasn't changed and the bearings they're machined way beyond what I could even measure so they should be about the same so that's a lot that's a lot to take in I hope this makes sense to you guys and I hope this works out but I gotta make some setup bearings now and I gotta take some measurements so excuse me alright so we are at the front of the truck looking back this is the shim I was talking about we'll go ahead and put this in oh well, first you wanna wipe it out with a rag 
already did once too off camera. I'm going to wipe this shim down real good too. So that way there's no extra debris on it. My marks. In there. Okay, and then we're gonna take our bearing race. Oh my gap. And once again, I apologize if I give you guys a smack or a bump, but I am right handed. And you're on my left side. So there is a possibility you could get bumped out of the way. Feels pretty solid. Yep, I'm gonna say that's good. Oop, still a little oil in there, but let's go ahead and put the other race in, shall we? All right, now from the other end. This time without shims. I already wiped it out. No shims involved. Hang on, I got a little bit of smuts on my bearing race. Getting that little bit of smuts off. Right my No um shims. That's solid. Alrighty. That's two in. Now to make some setup bearings. All right. Got a clean piece of cardboard out of the pitcher. Oops. I've wiped everything down. I got my setup bearings for the pinion made. So trying to watch in the camera see there's that one and then there's that one pull them off pull them on without a press okay so what you're gonna do you're gonna get down here pop this guy in okay and then you're going to put this guy in as carefully as you can. All right, there's the, there's both of those. Right there in there. And then what goes are the shims we just had. I've wiped them down several times. I'm going to wipe them, down, wipe them down again even as we speak. But these shims go on. Just like it. And then this guy. He is an oil slinger. That's what I got. And then we're going to fasten our... Well, normally if you were assembling this for real, you put the seal in, but we're not going to... I'm going to end up taking this back out anyway. So anyways, you got your yoke. Then we're going to use the old washer. And normally you'd use the old nut, but I boogered mine. Taking it off, so it looks like I'm going to be in the whole opinion nut as well. And I just realized I forgot my Torx wrench, so I'll be back in a moment. Okay, one moment. Sorry, I kind of knocked you around a little bit, but... Oops. 
that was dumb. Should check directional rotation before doing anything. Alright, now back to the smartiness. Got a little bit of drag here. Let's see how much we got. Now, ideally, according to Dana, we'd spin that around four times. But unfortunately, I'm in the truck. I got a leaf spring here. I got an oil pan there, I got a drive shaft here, and we've got roughly 25 inch pounds, which is perfectly good for setup. Um, ideally, for a final torque, I'd. Oops, sorry, I keep bumping you. Ideally, for a final torque, you'd want somewhere, but I think I think it's like, like 15 to 20, but I think 25 will be alright just to see where we're at and where our pattern is. So earlier, I did my stacks of shims. CE and GE, and I measured them, wrote down the measurements. I kept them separate, cleaned them up. GE's gear and CE, I know that's probably not right, but at work, I work on locomotives, you have the pinion in and the commutator in. So, just to keep it clear in my head, gear in, commutator in, even though there's no commutator. But it just tells me that's the opposite end. Hey, as long as it makes sense in my head. I'm not too much worried. I mean, I am worried about yours, but mostly I'm worried about me. Um, I got my setup bearings made. Um, I can't take them off with one hand, but I can take them off. Bearing races, the old races are polished up. Dead blow hammer is somewhere in that vicinity around the light. Oh no, right, there it is. And we're going to see if I can get this puppy in there. See if there's any backlash. If there's backlash, we'll take a reading. If there's not backlash, well, I guess we'll have to pull it back out again. Okay. All right. Standing by. This is attempt number one. I don't know if it'll go. Here we go. And once again, if I knock you out of the way and you can't see, I'm sorry. Boy, this is going worse than I thought it would. All right. All right, so sorry I didn't get it on camera, but basically, um, I think I just held my mouth the right way and it went in. Um, if I get it, well, I'm definitely going to do it again because, like I said, this is just a setup. We do have backlash right now. Of course, once I get this sucker tight, there may not be any backlash. We'll have to see. to see that is our backlash that's way too much so if you're wondering that's way too much like I don't even need to measure it I probably will just for a baseline but I'm gonna say we need to throw like 20 thou at it flip 20 thou from this side to this side so the good news is, is thanks to our setup bearings, that shouldn't be a big deal. Um, I'm also not sure for an metal I mean, like I can grab the pinion. I 
and get it to rotate, but it doesn't sound right. Of course, it could be just that there's an insane amount of backlash. All right, check in a minute. All right, let's see if I can get it on camera this time. Moved about twenty thousandths around. There we go. camera all right two dots and two dots Well, I'm going to say our pinion is not deep enough. If this doesn't clean it up a little bit. One knot. Yeah, that's still an amazing amount. I'm going to go ahead and say it. Our opinion's not deep enough. All right, once again, since I'm right-handed, I'll have to film this, set you aside, and film it again. But there is a start. See what we get. Like I said, I'm already 98% sure. It would appear that we don't even touch enough to make a mark. Yeah, there's my mark. So we're nowhere near deep enough. We're only hitting about half a tooth, so taking it apart. I don't know, 40 thousandths? We'll see. So sometimes when something just doesn't feel right, you need to stop and reevaluate. And that's what I kind of did yesterday. I, wow, I shouldn't say yesterday. It was actually two days ago. I was not real happy with my gear contact. As you can see there almost wasn't any. And I forgot something I knew before. And that is that the I think called a carrier brake and what a carrier brake is whenever you go from numerically uh, lower or actually in theory higher gears like if you went from like we're in this case we're going from 307s to 411s or 321s to 411s at a certain point like as your pin your pinion keeps getting smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. As a matter of well, I don't have the other one out. I actually put it back in the truck. But um, as your pinion gets smaller, that gear gets they machine it thicker and thicker and thicker until it gets to a point where they're like, hey, we're wasting a lot of material here. And what they do then is they they develop a different carrier. It's called a carrier brake. 
going and the Dodge uh, Dana 44s, I'm not going to say all the Dana 44s, but in the Dodge Dana 44s, the brake is right at 391. So us going from 321 to 411, we were crossing over it, and that necessitates a new carrier. Okay, this one's from Yukon. I got it on Amazon. It's like 60 bucks. I'm just going to put the spool back in it. But to show you what the difference is, I have them both sitting on this bench. And as you can see, there's roughly, actually there should be roughly a quarter inch difference between the two. See that? Now overall, and every other dimension, they're exactly the same. So what I got to do, you can see like even this lip, this whole lip is missing. And it's right here. So this is where... Whenever they first rough machined it, they, they could have made it one or the other. And I think they made it, you know, this one's this one. You can see it a little bit better from the bottom, too, if you get a cross, straight cross shot. See how this one's a lot flatter, and this one's more V-shaped. Okay. That is why that is. Now, in this guy, I bought this car with four 56s in it. It was a drag car. I did the paint and everything. Uh, it used to be blue. But uh, I, I wanted a street car. So the first thing I did was I went shopping for some gears. And that's when I first realized about a carrier brake. Because I had a rear end with 456s already in it, I had to switch to a gear uh, with a brake over. I went to 411s first. And then I actually found a set of specialty gears from Summit that are called breakover gears which are 373's and that's what I put in there but they're specialty machine they got a little asterisk beside them so on this guy we're gonna stick that carrier with that gear on put my setup bearings back on throw it in and see if we make good contact and if we don't then we'll study on it some more so did you ever have one of those times where you feel like you're just chasing your tail I think really somebody's been here before and it's throwing me off because I'm used to taking stuff apart and putting it back together the way I took it apart but after doing some research I found out okay this is this is my pinion gear okay whenever I took it out and I go back and double check my video because I really don't think there was one there but there was I thought this shim or that slinger was the same as this slinger which it's not as you can see they're not even the same size and what I figured out is there was supposed to be a slinger like I was putting the bearing back on like that there's supposed to be an oil slinger right there and I'm really sure there wasn't. I mean, I'm really sure there wasn't. So with that said, once you put that in, then you put these in. Then you put this on. And then this slinger goes like that. And that helps keep oil at your bearings. Keep, keeps oil in this valley so it has trouble getting around. So I, I, once again, I took it all apart. You adjust your pinion depth with the shims under this race. So I should have made a setup bearing for that, but I didn't. I'm just going to reuse the shims we have right now. Now, I did a whole bunch of measuring. And by a whole bunch of measuring, I have the Proform pinion depth measuring tool. And I'm a little out of my league, but it says that the base measurement for any gear set is a 4.3. 312 so 4 inches 312,000 so that's what 4 and 5 sixteenths of an inch is supposed to be your measurement from this face to the center line like way back in here uh, back where your pinion mounts you measure the pinion head you subtract that and that gives you your shims or whatever well whenever I measured this pinion I came up with a hundred and seventy seven thousandths worth of shims needed which seems 
high. Like, ridiculously high. If I need 177,000 worth of shims, I'm going to be really surprised. But either way, the only way to know for sure, even if you take all your measurements, is to run a test pattern. So that's what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to put this back in, just the way I assembled it here. Get my 20 inch pounds, 15 to 20 inch pounds of uh, preload on the bearing. And then I'm going to put my setup bearings on that carrier, stick it in there, and run it. And see what I get. Um, it's been very frustrating, but I honestly, it, it just is the fact that, like I said, somebody was in here before and somebody did not put that slinger back on. I may never have had the right gear, gear to tooth contact in the front of this thing, which really wouldn't surprise me at all, but I'm not one for just slapping stuff together. You know what I mean? I want to do it right. So we're going to do this right. All right. All right. Everything's back in there. I got my 20 inch pounds of drag. I apologize, my compressor's running, but normally I wait, but oops, sorry for bumping you again. Now, before you guys jump over me, I know I didn't put the spool back in the carrier yet. It just, why well, make it heavier if you don't have to? Because we're going to take this all back apart anyway to put the real bearings on. Even if by some miracle it's perfectly right. Ooh. Ooh. Sorry, did I bump you way out of the way? Uh, just a little bit. That might be a little tight, but... Um, not bad. Might be a little tight. Feels like there's something in there. Now let me make sure it goes all the way around. Wow. <laughs> Sometimes maybe better lucky than good. I'm going to repaint this just to be sure. Well, that's really dry. I need to add some oil to that paint. In case you don't know, you want a little bit of uh, gear oil added to your paint. That helps it, uh, if you put it on there too dry, or too condensed. I've got to say, I think that's pretty good. That's maybe a hair deep, but like if I'm just taking a pattern reading, I'm gonna call that. I'm gonna call that really good. I mean, it's it's the full way across the tooth. Yeah, a little bit more to the 
heel. I'm going to check my book. Actually, I think, hold on. I think that second tooth is a little, a little more pronounced with it. Second and third tooth. Shift the coast side. Oh. Well, it looks like I have to run through again to get the coast side. Hold on. that's pretty good I didn't check my backlash yet but it doesn't feel bad I think that's pretty close to the whole tooth yeah I'll double check my book make sure um, sorry I dropped my in case you're wondering, we definitely do not have enough backlash. We got like three thousandths of backlash. So I think it's supposed to be like six to eleven. So we'll uh, we'll make an adjustment here on the carrier. Throw it in there. Check it again, again. And if we're happy with it, we're gonna go right into final assembly. Woohoo! So I had just a 30,000 shim on this side and I was too close to the gear because I didn't have enough backlash. So I took what was my next smallest shim. It was only a 10,000 so I took and put two 10,000 shims on this side and one 10,000 shim on this side. And we'll see if that puts me in the ballpark or if I got to go and uh, science some stuff out. You know what I mean? Still don't have a whole lot of backlash. I'll see if it's enough though. If it's greater than six, we're gonna run with it. Oops. Ah, it's like five. Four and a half to five. Oh, well, you weren't even watching any of that. Sorry, it is right smack, like right there it's zero, like four and a half. Oh, maybe that's six. Hold on, is it going back? Nope. It moved. <sighs> Part again. Whoops. I uh, forgot to turn my camera on, but I got it reinstalled, and that sounds a lot better. Let's see if it is. If it is, we'll check the pattern one more time. Well, that's, that's 11 on the nose. All right, are you still looking where I didn't bump you, did I? All right, cool. Oops.
I'm going to call that absolute victory. It's right on center. I mean, there ain't, there ain't nothing wrong with that pattern. I don't care who you are. Let's check the other side. Coast side. Yeah, it's pretty... Pretty spot on. Right in the center. Going off to the back, maybe a hair. But, I mean, sorry for all the shaking and stuff, but I'm, I'm really tickled with that. Um, I just got lucky. Honestly, um, if you didn't get a good pattern, I'd suggest making uh, the inner pinion race, grind it some, make it a setup. That way you can swap your shims, but I mean, I'll take Lucky over everything. Sorry, I can't show you too much more, but I'm not going to go through this to mess it up just to do it again. But learn from my mistakes, too. If I hadn't figured out that slinger, I would have put in a lot of shims in there. And then found out I burned up my bearings when I didn't have a slinger. Okie dokie. Tear her apart. Tomorrow I'll put her together for real. So raise your hand if you thought that I was going to take that gear back off to get the spool back in. Because I sure as heck didn't guess that. I took it off of this one without doing anything, but that little quarter inch made it so that the spool, I couldn't slide the pins or anything in past the gear. So I had to take the gear back off, put the spool back in, and then uh, put the gear back on again. So that's the third time my gear's been off and on. I didn't record it because, you know, why. But now that we've got everything together... We're going to go ahead and I already pressed on, well, I already pressed on my carrier bearings. They're on, pressed, good. Shims are behind them, good to go. Uh, my pinion bearing, this is pressed on. I'm going to put a little light coat of oil on all my bearings and then I'm going to go ahead and put my shims on. Oops, all of them. And then I'm going to go to the back side. I'm going to put my bearing in my slinger in and my seal just like that bam 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 slide my pinion in put the yoke and the nut on and then get this puppy tightened down alright I'll take you along for the ride hopefully I don't knock you out of the way alright so here it goes putting the bearing in the slinger in and then what I found but this pinion seal is it has this lip on it. You can see that, this lip. And that's not going to work for a seal driver because I don't want to pound it right there. So the pinion race, the old pinion race, fits pretty snugly the whole way around. So we're going to use that. Just set it in. And then a driver. And now we're going to tap, tap, tap it. Looks spectacular. Really good. All right, the new pinion. Now this isn't gonna fit the whole way through quite as easily as it had before. It's actually gonna press fit into the new bearing race slightly. Yep, like that. See. So what we're gonna do? Apply our yoke. Make sure. All right. Well, I'm gonna use my old nut real quick. We're just gonna draw this guy through, oh, hopefully, if I can get enough. Uh, 
All right, now we use a little persuader. Very gently. Oops. Aha, that could help take the old washer off. Now we use the nut to draw it on just a little bit. Again, right now I'm using the old pinion nut without a washer. Oops. Should be enough. Now I'll put my new washer on. I hope I didn't bump you guys at all. And then a little Loctite on the new nut. If I keep <laughs> hey, there's a little bit of drag right there. much see if we gotta improve it at all. Oops. Hmm, that seems awful high. Sometimes if you uh, bump these things when you put them on, yeah, that's like five, five inch pounds, so we're going to go a little further. Doesn't have to be much. Too much, we might have to back it off just a hair. Actually, it feels pretty good. Let's see. Oops. That might be a hair much. I'm gonna have to give her a tap off just a little bit. Yeah, let's give her just a tap. Yep, just a little more of a tap.
Oh yeah, that's a sweet spot. Yeah, about 20 inch pounds. That'll work. Exciting! Woohoo! Alright, so let's try to throw this sucker in there for one last time. I'll give everything a good wipe down again. Once again, I oiled my bearings a little bit. I got brand new. Oops, sorry, popping them away. I got brand new bearing cups. We're bearing races. I hope I don't knock you out of the way again. But at the same fact, there's this sucker gonna go in there one way or another. Hopefully for the last time. <sighs> hmm. <sighs> Something tells me. Well. Tell you what, let's see what it looks like after we tighten it. I don't have any side play, but it seemed a little loose. But and again, two dots, two dots. And if I was ever wondering where my oil leak was. Definitely right there. One dot, one dot. There's my one dot. We're missing something. We got way too much backlash. Okay. Take her apart. All right, so if you're wondering what happened before, I was missing a shim on this side. It stuck to the back of my old carrier. Um, but right now, I'm right at nine thousandths of backlash. Which, 
I think it's 12, 6 to 12. So we're, in the, we're, we're, we're within the window of good. Let's go ahead and paint up our teeth and check our pattern. And then if our pattern's good, we'll torque everything down. And put the diff cover back on. And... Oh, I gotta torque these guys down, actually, for, for reals. side we're going from about quarter inch on the edge of the tooth all the way to the top and on the drive side we're right about smack in the middle so I don't think it gets much better than that torque it and tighten it all right let's go all right we've waited the prescribed 10 minutes uh, let's put this cover on. Make sure we get plenty of squish out too. Sorry, I bumped you again. I do that a lot. Good news is I'm actually conscious of it now. So if I ever turn full YouTube Pro. have to worry about it so much of course then I'll probably have an actual lift and a camera set up and all these cool tools Now these diff covers, I don't know if I told said it before, but I usually tighten them from the bottom and then work my way up. So uh, I got a little overcoat board with the silicone. Just throwing that out there too. Until I see a good bit of squish out. this sit till tomorrow before we fill it just because um, I want to give this adhesive time to set up before I put oil to it the directions didn't specify anything if your directions specify five minutes ten minutes a half hour whatever uh, listen to it if not give it a little bit more like I said the directions for this one said to spooge it on there and then wait ten minutes before you uh, applied it and t and and, and folded it down to give the um, RTV a chance to develop some film but all right rock and roll so while we're waiting for our adhesive to tack up on our differential cover go ahead and take the axle shaft wipe it down slide this puppy in And 
we're engaged. Go ahead and take these nuts off and washers. Put our spindle back on. I remember where the hell I put it. Oh, right in front of me. Um, I put a little extra grease in there. Just, uh, because, well, originally I planned on redoing the wheel bearings and all that happy crap, but let's put it this way. This project's gone a little over budget. A little over length. As you can see, I got new ball joints in it and stuff. I didn't record any of that, but uh, just an idea. And all new brake lines. So, uh, at least if I have to do this again, I'll tear the axle the whole way down. the next day and it's time to fill this pig in case you couldn't tell by the videos and the changing color of my bandanas my bananas bandanas um, I've been working on this thing as I get a chance to over the course of uh, quite a while actually it's been well, two three weeks but I'm not able to work on it every day as most everybody else probably understands because you know job life kids whatever should take about two quarts. Some of you who might be eagle-eyed enough to notice that I didn't put the brake dust shield back on. That's because, well quite frankly, this side didn't have one when I took it apart. And honestly, if you've seen the wheels on this truck, it doesn't really matter. <laughs> um, but I am going to do a couple things. I had wanted to completely redo the seals and repack my wheel bearings. Unfortunately, my local auto parts store does not carry the wheel bearings and as surprising as that is I uh, decided that you know I could I could re-grease and repack these at some point but I did pack a bunch of grease in and repack the outside wheel bearing so there goes that on to there and then we stick this happily greased guy back into there and then
get your specialty hub socket. Stick it in and start to tighten. Now what I usually will do is I'll take it down to snug. Actually let me take a stupid extension off. Oh, eh. edit that out because you're a moron. Put the bearing in, then you put the nut on. And that actually helps. Now what I'll usually do is go till bottoms and get snug. Cause that kind of seats your bearing up. bit of drag. Yep, now we're tight. Now back it off a little bit until it spins. Tighten it up until it stops. Alright, my battery died, not sure where, so we're going to pick up where, where I know I have video of. So I got my hub back on, repacked my wheel bearing, like I said I was planning on redoing the seals and everything, but we're under a, running out of time. This project's already spiraled out of control. So what we're going to do is take your nut, well, there's two nuts, they're identical. At least in my case but you might want to check them just to be sure because if one of them has a flat side the flat side goes in but they should be identical then you take your spindle nut socket and once you got that together you gotta thread it on usually I go right to what seat Seat that bearing in. There we go. Now it's tight, won't move. So now we're going to back it off, quarter turn, until it turns. Feels pretty good. Then we're going to seat it again. See how it went a little further? That's why we're doing this. And then we're going to back it off a quarter turn. Still got good play. 
One more time. There it went again. A little bit more. Then we're going to back it off. Quarter turn. And that's good. Now, if you paid attention and was smart, yeah, I did. You put your spindle with a little notch at the top. That's for this guy. This guy's your lock, lock washer. He's got a little nub on him. Okay, and he goes back in. Then you get your other in the washer. Or your other nut, excuse me, your other lock nut. Let's go ahead. Start it by hand. Then this time, we're going to run her down. Then we're just going to go with it down. Tight. Tight as I can get it. Okie dokie. Now we're going to take our hub. Which I'm betting I left them. Did I bring my Allen wrenches over? I bet you I left them over there. Sorry, I went ahead and finished up the other side because, you know, I was sitting there. And it needed done. I'm going to put just a little bit of grease in on this thing, too. I mean, you could take this inner part all apart and stuff, but... Like I said, I'll be doing wool bearings here on it eventually, anyway. like that. Make sure you get good push. Alright, and then you can, I can usually do this just by hand. A snap ring back in the outside. There's that. And then Use uh, snap ring pliers. Make sure there ain't a whole bunch of garbage on it. But you got your inside snap ring. Like I said, make sure it's tight. Then you got your hub yourself. Hub itself. Hub yourself. Hub itself. I'm getting grease everywhere, but it's all right. I mean, that's what they make rags for, right? And then on your hub, you have these little notches. One there, one there, one there. There's little notches inside your hub bracket. So you want to line those up, get them kind of started, and then, oops, drop it on the floor. Make sure it rolls around in the dirt real good. Sorry. Make sure there ain't no dirt on it. Get them lined up again. And then you can... Right in your Allen bolts. And if I would have remembered to bring it over my Allen keys. Allen 
wrenches and we're gonna draw these in kind of in a crossways pattern there ain't a whole lot of resistance on them but once you start to feel that one's pulling go ahead and move over Uh, the size of your Allen wrench is going to vary based off of the manufacturer of your hubs, I believe. Now we can just run them down. Now you don't go to town on these too much because believe it or not these aren't like any grade bolts they're like grade 2 bolts and you will snap them been there done that more than once so much so all right Good spin with just a little bit of drag. We don't feel any palpitations, any roughness. And now let's check our hub. Spinning, spinning. Locked. Free. Locked. Free. Locked. Free. Works just like that. Can't go any smoother. So now I'm going to put my... Uh, Brakes on. I am gonna. I do hose these down with brake clean, so you know, greasy paws. You know, don't want that on your rotor. But I am gonna uh, hose this sucker down with brake clean. Put my tie rod back across the front. Tighten those bolts down, and then start reassembling my brakes. I did take my calipers the whole way off. You don't have to. I was replacing my rubber lines anyway, so why not? You know what I mean? All right. Another, that leaves us room for another video whenever I go over how to change and grease your wheel bearings. So by the fact we have something else in the shop, you should tell that the Ram Charger's out. And I got a mess to clean up. But first, before we get to the review, full disclaimer, I'm going to use the same review for two separate, or three separate videos detailing the build-up of a Dodge Ram Charger because quite frankly I changed all three things at once that being the intake manifold and both the front and rear end and another disclaimer I don't have a really good way to test the front end because it has a spool in it and I can't put the hubs in and put it under load on the road and I'm not gonna go out off-road and too much for it because even if I did you wouldn't hear it if it was misaligned anyway but all right on to the coolness disclaimer I did do both axles they both have 411s put the Speedmaster or what you call it intake manifold on it and it runs good Idles comfortably at 700 RPM, roughly. Well, if you look straight onto it, it's probably a little closer to 800. I wonder why it looks that way on the camera. I don't know. Nino doesn't line up. Well, actually, now I'm looking at it. It's a little high there. I don't know. 800, 900. Good enough. Temps are good. I mean, it's never idled like this before. We're going to go get some gas and get this thing safety inspected because, you know, Pennsylvania. Um, I won't be able to talk too much while I drive until I get up on the highway due to the fact that this thing's a stick shift that's a steering wheel and I only have two hands okay till we get going all right so here we are driving down the road believe it or not according to the speed over doing somewhere close to 50 mile an hour I never 
never did fix that because it's not calibrated anyway. But for the field, we're driving along and we're doing roughly 2,000 RPM. I almost wish I would have went a little steeper, maybe a set of 456s, but I mean, it's not bad enough that I'm going to go back and redo anything. Uh, the 35s and the 411s seem to work really well. Um, the Speedmaster intake manifold fits snugly. It performs as good if not better. I mean, it's not popping, banging. Whenever I let off the throttle, they used to go pop, 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 pop. And, that, and it was always a fight. I could either get this truck to idle or I could get it to run. And I kind of settled for a balance of crappy and a little bit of both. But now, like whenever I put my foot into it, it pulls. Where before, I was constantly rowing between uh, third and fourth gear. So I'm gonna consider everything a success. I'm sorry if you're watching this and you know you watch all the videos and you get the same review matter of fact i'm going to do a disclaimer before i do the review that the review is going to be the same on all three videos but for i don't know roughly a thousand dollars is what i put into it it's a totally different vehicle um i think fixing the tie rod ends and that ball joint have definitely tighten up the steering <laughs> which I know shouldn't be a surprise but uh, it's definitely made it more tame I'm driving along like I can accelerate in top gear everything seems to be functioning as is we're gonna go get this thing safety and uh, I'm gonna say that's a wrap for this video Oh, and it starts out in second now, where before I had to start out everything in first gear. And then as soon as I got going in first gear, shift to second, because first gear, you 